Ever since I made the video uh, designing the Tesla Cybertruck, I've been getting constant requests for the 3D printable file, the STL file. Now, I made the Fusion 360 file available for download in case you wanted to play around with the design, but that design wasn't exactly 3D printer friendly. So today I thought I would show you how I modified that design to make it 3D printable. And along the way, we'll give you some very important tips in Fusion 360 that I think you're gonna find very valuable and that they will make your path from design to 3D printed part a lot more efficient. And since we're in the holiday season, I thought it would be great and fun to turn the Cybertruck into a Christmas tree ornament. So I'm gonna show you how I went about that as well. I'm gonna upload the file to Thingiverse and maybe a few other 3D downloadable sites and I'll leave the link below to where you can find it. Also, I've recently created a free Fusion 360 quick start guide so that if you're new to Fusion 360 and 3D printing, you're gonna wanna check that out. I've got that link below as well. Here's the completed model hanging on my tree. I'm gonna briefly go over the 3D printing and assembly of the model, and then we'll jump into Fusion 360 so I can share some tips with you. I decided to go with a vertical upright orientation when printing this model, and I sent one copy to my Prusa and the other one to my MakerBot Replicator 2. Now, the MakerBot Replicator, it prints with a non-heated bed, so it sticks on acrylic and PLA sticks really well to acrylic and I underestimated this a bit and as you can see when I went to go remove it this happened I actually broke the tailgate now contrast that from removing the print from my textured flex plate it just came right off the broken tailgate was nothing a little bit of CA glue and a clamp couldn't fix so I was able to salvage the model and I used the same CA glue to attach the wheels at first I was thinking of doing a snap fit design where the wheels would kind of snap in place, but then I thought just to keep the design simple and use glue to attach the wheels. And since this is an ornament, I attached this threaded eye hook into place and that'll allow me to come in with those little ornament hooks and hang this off my tree. Notice when I grab it how it hangs in place, it doesn't sort of bend one way or the other. I actually used Fusion 360 to find the center of mass there and I'll show you how I did that neat little trick. And here it is hanging on my tree and I actually went to Dunkin Donuts and they had a nice tree up and I had my Cybertruck in my pocket so I hung it on their tree and took a picture and that's it right there. Alright, let's jump into Fusion 360 so I can share some tips with you. Here's the original Cybertruck that I started with. Now, the first problem we're gonna encounter in trying to 3D print this is one of scale. So I modeled this in real size. So if I click my little ruler inspect button up here and I measure from, let's say, this front edge to this back, I'm getting 5,689 millimeters. Yes, I did design this in millimeters, I know. So if I do try to 3D print this, now, in the new Fusion interface, the 3D print button is actually under the tools menu. So you'll go to tools and then you're going to go to make. You can just click on the icon here or you can go to make 3D print. Select your model. If you want to save this as an STL file, you simply uncheck the send to 3D print utility and it'll save it out as an STL file. You can select the folder. But if you want to send it straight to a slicer, for example, you would check that and you have your list of different slicers here or you can simply add your own custom one by telling it where the file location is. So here I have Simplify 3D chosen and I'll click OK and it'll open up Simplify 3D and it'll try to send it in and automatically I get this message that says cannot auto arrange largest part exceeds build dimension. So it's saying this is way too big to even print, you can't do it. Um, sometimes it does bring it in and it's just huge, um, but I think this is just way too huge to even work with. So the first thing we're going to have to do is scale it down. Now, the way I scaled this is to simply here go back to the solid tab here, go to modify, go down to scale, select my model. I wanted to make this the size of an ornament since it's the holidays. I thought this would be a neat little ornament to make and hang on the tree. And the scale factor that I used is 0 0.016. 
So I'll click to select my model and then just type it in 0 0.016. That's going to make it very tiny. Click OK. And if I zoom into my car, there's the scale that I want to 3D print it in. So then I would simply go back to tools, make, select my model, click OK here. I still have Simplify 3D selected as the slicer right now. And then it should just open it and drop it right in. Okay, so there it is. That size is going to work a lot better. Notice how the model came in lying on its hood, which brings us to our second tip in Fusion 360. When preparing a model for 3D printing, take advantage of your align tool. How you have it positioned in Fusion 360 will be the same way it's going to export when you bring it to your slicer. Now you can always change the orientation in the slicer, but I find sometimes it's better just to do it within your CAD software. And it's really easy in Fusion 360 if you take advantage of your align tool. So let's go ahead and play around with that. So I'll bring in my origin here just to turn on my planes. I'm going to go to modify down to a line and now all I have to do is select a particular face so let's say I want it to print on this surface here I will click on that and then that sets my from and then my two I just simply set the plane I want that to lie on so I'll do my XY plane here and you can see it aligns that surface of the print with that plane. So that's what I want, but I want it to be flipped. So I can click on this little flip button here and that will turn it the other way and then simply click OK. So you see how simple that is. Now notice my Z axis here. If I remove my model, that blue axis is my Z. So that's my up down axis. So this is the orientation that if I export it in this way, it's going to bring it into my slicer. Now what I ended up going with is having this backside here on my X, Y axis so that the model prints upright. So again, to do that, I would simply go to modify down to align, select the surface. And to select that XY plan, I can actually select through it. Another option is to simply go here, expand your origins here, and then just choose XY. And that lines it up like right there. Again, I'm just going to flip it and it'll be pointing up. So very valuable tip there to quickly arrange your parts the way you want it to actually be imported into your slicer. Next, let's briefly talk about overhangs in 3D printing because this is a very important concept when trying to actually optimize a print uh, for 3D printing. So let's take a look at this model here. You'll see this is uh, quite a bit different from my original model if I look at the underside. And that's because the problem I was going to have was with these, uh, this part right here which the wheels were going to attach to. Now you can see how this comes out pretty much straight out. And, uh, it's not enough of a fillet there that that would be able to print. So uh, I would have issues there because there's nothing on the bottom to support that drastic angle there. And I would also have some issues up here where I would need to enable supports. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this concept, basically when you're 3D printing with FDM 3D printers, the type that melt plastics and, and redeposit, uh, you need the bottom layers to support the top layers. And a way you can do that is just to enable supports in your slicer, which will just sort of build up this scaffolding material that you can then just rip apart. But it ends up taking a lot of time and extra material. So I try to design my way out of having to use supports. So you can see in the model, I made some modifications here to give me the right angles so that I can print this upright and not need to enable supports. And I'll move on to this little sketch here that I created to just quickly explain how this works. So let's say you're printing this little figurine here and let's focus on the arms. So this, you're up and down, this would be your Z axis. So this little guy is standing up and you're printing the arms, let's say the arms are straight out like this. Well, that's going to be a problem because, again, there's nothing here to support this arm as it's being built up. So as the printer is depositing filament, it would just droop and you'd have a little spaghetti mess on the bottom. Now, let's remove that constraint. If we start to go, if we start to lift the arms up, we get to sort of this sweet spot where the filament being deposit can actually be able to support itself and it just builds on top of itself. 
and that sweet spot is somewhere right here. And we can get a little more specific with that if we move on here. You can see, uh, let's take this arm out. That sweet spot here is between uh, 45 degrees from the um, vertical here. And that's for most printers, it can handle that. Now, if you have a very well-tuned printer, which really all depends on the type of cooling. If you have some really good fans and they're optimally placed and you have some good cooling, you can actually get away up to like 60 degrees. Um, so that's basically what it comes down to. And it, this is good to know when you're designing to, if you need to modify it to be able to print without supports, you're gonna wanna tweak those angles. And usually it involves putting some fillets and putting some chamfers to get your designs to be within this sweet spot here so that you can print without having to use supports. Okay, I hope this makes sense. If not, leave your questions in the comments below and I'll move on to my next tip. Okay, this final tip is really specific to me wanting to create an ornament out of the model. And I wanted to hang this by a string and I wanted to be able to lay level and not go to one side or the other. Um, so to do that, I needed to find where my center of mass is, and that was going to tell me where I can actually put this hole. It's actually really simple to do. You're going to go to your inspect menu here, and you're just going to click on center of mass. And then you can select your model, click OK. And if I just turn on the little analysis I here, you'll see that I get this little mark here showing me exactly where my center of mass is. And what I did there was I simply then created an offset plane by going to construct down to offset plane. Just selected the bottom surface. You can select any surface or any plane. I just moved that up. Let me turn on my construction planes here so that it was just above where I wanted to create that circle I clicked OK and then I created a sketch on that plane and then all I did was simply reference where that center uh, of my mass is so then I can simply create a circle which I did here uh, I believe I made it like two millimeters and then I can move that in place I'll move it near where I want it to be and to get it perfectly lined up I'll use my horizontal slash vertical constraint click on the center of my circle click on the origin and now I know that it's constrained right on that uh, center axis there. Then I can just move it right into place, line it up, and then to lock it, I'll enter a dimension. So D on my keyboard for a dimension. Select the dimension between my origin here and my uh, circle. And then I can just type whatever that is. Let's say 2.1 millimeters there just to round it. And there it is. And then finish sketch and then I have that circle there and let me just I'll redo this let me erase this beautiful thing with Fusion 360 here's a bonus tip um, if you just quickly need to delete a surface you can click on that actual surface and hit delete Fusion does a really great job healing that surface um, and now just to redo this for you I'll click on that circle there that's my plane I'll go to create down to extrude and then as I start bringing this down, I can simply go here where to start. I'm gonna say start from object instead of from where that plane is. Select the top uh, part here of the car as my object. And now I can just bring that down. And then I can go however uh, far is that little hook that I'm gonna go ahead and screw in here is. So I'll say like five millimeters, click okay. And I've got my circle in there, or I should say my hole, that's perfectly placed where my center of mass is. So you'll notice when I hang this on the tree, it'll actually hang horizontal. All right, if you have any questions on any of the techniques I used in this video, leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, you're gonna wanna do that because I've got lots of really interesting Fusion 360 projects coming up. Don't forget I've got the quick start guide, uh, the link to the quick start guide down in the comments below, and also the link to get the STL file for the Fusion 360 uh, Cybertruck model that I made. So if you wanna print your own ornament, uh, grab that as well. And I will see you guys next week. Oh, if you do end up printing yours and uh, you take a picture of it and you post it on uh, any social media 
uh, channel, um, go ahead and tag me because I'd like to take a look at it. Um, just, uh, you know, at desktop makes and I will find it. So looking forward to see your designs. Uh, I'll see you guys.